Hi, I want to show you how to create a cumulative distribution plot using Power BI. As you see from the top visuals, this is an alternative to a histogram. A histogram allows us to see the frequency of our data once it's been binned or categorized into different numbers of categories or bins. And as you see from the data, depending on the number of bins, we will get a dis different distribution of the data. So an alternative, which allows us to see all of the data points with the frequency of our data, is a cumulative distribution plot. The frequency goes from zero to one, and each one of these lines represent a percentile or even a probability. For example, I can choose a dot and see that 55% of our data is under a dollar 42. We can also get different distributions if we filter. And this histogram has only 15 bins. This one has the standard that is chosen by Power BI, which is 53 for this data set. And this has over 500 bins. So you can see we see different level of noise in the data. So I'm going to show you how to create one of these cumulative distribution plots. So you will be able to see all your data points, be able to get the percentile and the frequency of that data. And this is an avocado data set that goes from our average price, which is at the bottom, and then our frequency here. And if we look at this plot, we can see there are some outliers here, which would have 100% or nearly 100% of our data would be under these points as you see from the frequency number there. So it's a great alternative to a histogram. Let me show you how we can create these using any new data. I, I'm going to bring in a new data set of housing prices for our example. So let me create a new tab. I'm going to get data, go to us. Uh, the CSV that I'm interested in. I'm going to load that data in. I'm going to go to transform. So the first thing I want to do is identify the column that I want. And I'm going to identify price. So I'm going to duplicate this data set. Then I am going to just get rid of the columns that I don't need. And in this case, I don't need any of these because they're, none of them are categorical. So I only need price. So I'm going to remove columns. Now that I have price, I want to sort this by ascending from least to greatest. So sort by ascending. And now our data goes from the smallest value for the home price to the highest value. Our next step is to create an index column. And we don't want this to start at zero. We want it to start at one. So we can go to the table formula. And instead of saying start at zero and increment by one, we start at one and increment by one. Now the, the most important thing we do is get the number of entries. And unfortunately, if you have more than a thousand rows, Power BI doesn't tell you the exact number. However, in this data set, we have 5,000 rows. So you're going to go to custom column. You're going to take the index and you're going to divide it by the number of rows that you have. And this will provide you with the frequency of that particular value. 
and now we can see that here. I'm going to make sure I change that data type into a decimal, and then I'm going to close and apply. Now that this is loading, I am going to open up the duplicated data set. I am going to choose a scatter plot. In this scatter plot, I would like to have price as my x axis and not the count of price, but actually the sum. And then for the y axis, I want that frequency that I've calculated. We can just drag in, oops, the, the y axis put frequency. And for detail, we can see the total amount of data. But it's a little bit obscured here, so we can just change this. I'm going to make the shapes a little bit thinner. And we can see that we have a lot of data there. And for the y-axis, I am going to end it at 1.1. So we can actually see the top of the data. And we can just choose a percentile. For example, the 55th percentile, I, I know that 55% of all our data is under 1.27 million. We can customize this by using some of the features in the analytics pane. For example, you can add a constant. And if you want to see where, let's do the 59th percentile. So we know 59 percentile is here. If you wanted to know what percent of your data fell under a million, you would just add this constant line. We can change the color. And now we know this would be where the area under this curve would be the probability. So the probability of the, the housing prices being a million or under is around 20%. If we go back to our original example, we can filter and see what that, how those data distributions change with each segment and we were able to see what the percentile difference is and the probability of data being under a specific value. I hope that helps.